I cannot believe I stuck my neck out for that fucking Ryan B's Chucky Entertainment motherfucker with 4K subs on YouTube. I am going to surpass him in subs one day, even if it's fucking 10 years from now. And I've long moved on from Rock of Fire, Chuck E. Cheese, etc. I'm burying that motherfucker. All right. Bury him now. Yeah, I am going <laughs> to fucking bury him now. You remember when I did that, uh, the sinister side of Aaron Fector video? The first fucking Fector commentary expose type thing? I yeah. Figured. Okay, so basically, he went to Goofy Gas, which is fucking David Ferguson, so that motherfucker. He records his uh, animatronic so singing bohemian rhapsody uh, and that pisses factor off he doesn't like seeing fucking fan programs of the rock of fire because it uh, muddies his brand a bit you know he doesn't like seeing other people make official rock of fire content so uh factor puts out this premium email telling all of his like fans sub to his service to dislike bomb the video and eventually he threatens to copyright strike it i go to bat for this kid that i barely fucking know i defend him in this uh video calling out Fector. And then after the video, right, the kid reaches out to me. He's asking for help fighting these copyright strikes and shit. And now, fucking years later, right, we have no contact. Now, after I call out fucking David for being a pedophile and Travis is going scorched earth against me, putting out Instagram post after Instagram post, he's suddenly fucking Team Mafia when he has no reason to get involved. Travis mm. put out that, uh, Instagram post sourcing Princess Bubbles, and then he responds all like journalistic integrity. Wait, he has that? Like, dude, I literally covered your fucking story. Yeah, yeah, like fuck that kid. Honestly, let's be real. If we're talking about journalistic integrity, what fucking journalistic integrity? Let me let me try that again. What journalistic integrity is there in what Travis and yeah, talk not about even fucking David, just Travis? We've caught out lie after lie Ika. Travis has posted, and he hasn't taken accountability for any of it. He hasn't taken down the false information or addressed it. It's still up yeah. on his fucking Instagram page. Like, I personally debunked the fucking bubble screenshot. He still has that up. Go fucking yeah. figure. All right, let's be real as far as the term journalistic integrity goes. He says you don't have any. When the fuck have you been wrong? Exactly. When By the way, I fucking worked in radio. In wrong. I was an actual fucking journalist. I made articles. Yeah, like, when have you wrote a fucking script for a video? When have you done research on a subject, came back to the video, made the video, published it, put it up, been wrong, and then never said anything about it? I'm if always fucking been wrong, right. Yeah, when you're always right. <laughs> Because you make sure you're not about to spread false information. You're not yeah. about to say some false shit like Travis being like, fucking, Demonic Abyss is out here trying to fuck minors. Or like Pika Love. Um, he's following little kids on this account so he can talk to them. Like, it's not like you're... It's not like you're creating outrageous fucking claims that have no footing behind them. You are finding fucking stories publishing stories that have confirmation on damn near every fucking step of the way and if you do not have foolproof confirmation what you do is you give fucking reason using other confirmations to prove why it is likely that you are correct on that point i think the most left field shit that you've ever said extends as shallow as fucking what was his name uh exploration unknown when his fucking channel when you said that he was attempting to sub bot which mm -hmm. even though that was left field as fuck you had your reasons for believing so it's not like you straight up said he's sub botting everybody yeah. get at him because i even made it clear that was saying, like that was a rumor yeah. like rumor has it and i personally believe so that this is the case you didn't say hey, everybody this is a known fact you said this is mm -hmm. just how i feel this is what some people are saying that's the case. Yeah. I think it honestly should be normalized for fucking, not just like commentary channels, but like people in fucking general put out posts like this that like actually correct their fucking mistakes. I mean, like oh, yeah. news stations and shit do it all the time, especially when you're doing like daily fucking reports, like you're going to get stuff wrong, you know, yeah. especially because like these stories are constantly developing. New information comes mm -hmm. out all the time. Oh, yeah. Like fucking the Burger King Kevin. All right. All right let's get some background on this. Burger King Kevin was a Twitter thread thing that released a while ago. 
years ago, maybe, at this point, I believe. Years, months, whatever. It's back whenever I first surfaced back into YouTube, after the Tim G drama, after the furries. I was riding a nice high. And after riding that high, I was making more videos. I made one on a guy going into a Burger King and slapping the manager after yelling over what was allegedly chicken nuggets. Well, I get a comment this year saying that that was simply not the case and that they know what actually happened. So I get in contact with the guy on Snapchat. We have a phone call. I tried to record the call, but my recording app simply did not record what I was saying at all. It only recorded what he was saying. So there was no point in using it because there was no context to what the fuck he was talking about. So me and him talk. We talk through text. He gives me the name of the person. I make a video about this stating that this isn't the case. What originally happened, what people were originally talking about. That this is actually a whole bigger fucking picture of this dude was abusing his girlfriend. And she tried to break up with him. And when she tried to break up with him, he came to her work, slapped her manager, and snapped shit. And eventually got arrested and shit. I talked to the fucking girl. I talked to Austin Addison himself, the guy who slapped the manager. Mm -hmm. I talked to almost every party involved. I talked to the girl who was over. She explained what happened. I talked to her friend. Their stories add up. And I did not clarify between them that I was going to talk to the other person. They didn't have time to formulate a fucking story. I was like, hey, send the girl my way. I want to talk to her. Within minutes, me and her were talking. It's not like she had time to go get a full-fledged fucking story from what he was talking about to add on to. Like, no, she was 100% transparent because she was reactive. She wasn't being dodgy at all. So I believe that this was the case. That he was abusing his girlfriend, and this is drama that erupted from it, and nobody knew the story. I went back, I corrected my mistake, and I called out Austin Addison and told him I'd beat his ass because he lives in Pennsylvania. That's beside the fact. <laughs> Austin Addison, if you're out there, I'll still box you, by the way. Skyler said he'd let us use his backyard. Imagine, though. That'd make fucking headlines right there. <laughs> Burger King Kevin and Breadstick 813 <laughs> have a boxing match. You guys could have, like, fucking buckets of uh, McDonald's nuggets and throw them at each other. <laughs> nah, bro, we just have to make our gloves out of chicken nuggets in a bag. Yes. You have ten... We're gonna have, like, a Mr. Beast challenge. You have ten minutes to make boxing gloves out of nuggets and paper bags. And then you have to box each other. I'll box the fuck out of Ryan <laughs> B's. I don't know how old that kid is, but when he turns fucking 18, uh, I'm showing up to <laughs> wherever the fuck he lives with boxing gloves. That is probably the only context in which saying just wait until you're 18 will ever be okay. <laughs> I, I wish the absolute fucking worst for that kid. I hope whatever fucking animatronics he has in the future, if he gets them, I hope they fucking spontaneously blow up and fucking combust. His entire house burns down, alright? And the wreckage of his burning house, his mom is fucking under some fucking rubble and the carpetbagger fucks his mom in front of his face. They all burn alive in that fucking fire. <laughs> Their skin is like molten black, screams of agony. And I get this all in fucking video while Bohemian Rhapsody plays in the background. And I put it right on Fector's YouTube channel. Oh, gosh. Oh, Nick Cage still has PTSD for whatever reason and just goes around the United States purging animatronics with a baseball bat. I find it weird that they try to push the narrative that, like, me and you are, like, fucking pedophiles or me and you are like down bad or something like like oh you know that's a, that's 100 percent them projecting it's fucking no you it's like Instead have you like not addressing... seen my fucking build have you not seen my face like i might not be attractive to them because i'm their fucking villain yeah but for the most part i'm seen as a fucking somewhat attractive dude i'm in fucking great shape i clearly take care of myself i cut my fucking hair and keep my face shaven I mean, right now I look like a fucking top of a foot, but... Oh, dude, same. I'm hot as fuck, man. In that case, I look like the bottom of one. <laughs> <laughs> a 
fucking, I can't wait to see the comments on based for that. You know how many thirst comments I get on my Instagram selfies? Um, I'd like to know how many Instagram selfies you have. Oh, good question. And... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I did go for a fucking... I, I was memeing on the whole becoming an Instagram model thing. I posted a lot in the beginning, but... I, I posted one recently. My Instagram is a cesspool of shirtless me. I know whenever I made thumbnails for my Tim G diss tracks, I just stole pictures of Tim off fucking Instagram. Yeah, you know the funny too? The one that you used, I, I was legit showing that I was like sunburned. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you were flexing or anything. I just seen that you there was a shirtless picture. I was like, I gotta use yeah. this one. That was, that was Tim G after I'm... the diss track dropped. <laughs> I'm like, the one that you use, oh gosh. <laughs> Burnt from those fire bars. <laughs> you know, I just spat fire like a dragon. I know I'm sunburnt. <laughs> what I'll probably do is just like cut out the best uh, talking bits. Okay. And then place that shit together. Just stitch this shit together like Frankenstein. Stitch it together like the remnants of David's fucking online image. Surprisingly, he still has a pretty strong online image. Considering this motherfucker literally threw a goofy gas Halloween party yesterday and a shit ton of minors still showed up. Hmm. I'm guessing their parents didn't fucking watch. Either they did or they were like, David would never do that. Well, the thing is, he still hasn't put out like any sort of public response. Nothing on his Instagram. Yeah, that's concerning. I mean, Travis responded for him. I'm sure Travis was at the fucking party. <laughs> Probably. I'm sure there's going to be some, like, footage surfacing up. I mean, we know Love was in attendance. Well, that shit he said, you know, disowning his fucking buddy, I guarantee he was at that party. Wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. It'll come out eventually. Oh, yeah, we just gotta sit back and wait. Assuming they hear this, they're gonna be fucking scrambling. They're gonna, like, get every fucking footage from everybody's fucking phone of me off that party. <laughs> Dude, Probably. it genuinely surprises me the shit they're willing to overlook for the sake of being able to see this motherfucker's goofy gas rock of fire show. I mean, we flat out exposed that he was attempting to get nudes off a fucking 14 year old. They're just not it's fine, bro. He has robots. He got very little fucking backlash off it. I mean, obviously our mm -hmm. community was calling him out, but the mafia didn't give a fuck, even after Travis quote unquote disowned him. I'm sure they lost all of, like, one or two members from the fucking Rock of Fire, or what was it called? The Mafia Junior? I'm sure they lost all of, like, two ma two members. If they throw a Christmas party, though, we gotta be right on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm crashing that shit. I'll dress up as more fucking Santa Claus and squeeze down his chimney. I'll, I'll walk in that bitch cat girl mando up, bro. Oh, hell yeah. You know, I never actually did anything YouTube-related to the cat girl mando... Thing in Steel City convention in general. At no point did I even address that on YouTube. I'm honestly surprised you didn't. You could have milked that for a decent bit of views, considering, like, uh, you know, there was a little buzz around the Cat Girl Mando thing with you winning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I fucking crushed that. I don't know what it was. There was adrenaline going through my veins I haven't felt since the shark attack of basic training, man. <laughs> it felt good. That flex was actually kind of hard to do. Like, I was stiff. I did that flex and I felt every fucking muscle in my body tense up. It's pretty much become like an established persona of yours at this point. Yeah, it's something I'll probably bring back. No, we just got to get Tim in a maid outfit. <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. That's how you can do your uh, YouTube boxing mats. Tim G versus <laughs> Breadstick813 and Cat Girl outfits. You know what? <laughs> I would let Tim win. Just because he was confident enough to put it on. That would get Logan Paul KSI views right there. You know, I've always wanted the fucking, the second dish track from Tim. Like, Well, it's funny because after that went on, I was actually writing, literally writing another one. Because I was just sick of everything, but there was just a lot going on. So I'm like, I'm just... <laughs> you still have the lyrics uh, of that diss track saved? I don't think so. I, well, I wasn't... I, don't think I really. I think I just made like a few lines. <laughs> Do you remember any of the fire bars you wrote down? Uh, <laughs> uh. At least what they were about. You know, it'll, it'll come to me eventually. I, I think because I was actually I was thinking about this uh, 
like one day uh, this weekend, and I think I I made like a DJ Khaled line in there somewhere um, because Bresig was always saying like on on Twitter and everything else is to do another one and another one. So I actually put that in there, like your DJ Khaled or something like that. <laughs> That, that would have killed me if you would have made a G- DJ Khaled reference. Because yeah. I'm like, you know, that would be nice because you were literally saying on, on everywhere for me to do another one. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that would have been clean. <laughs> yeah. That, that would... but I, eventually, I eventually trashed it because uh, there was just a lot going on at that time. And it's just... Uh, yeah, you took a big was... break from YouTube. Like, you yeah. completely haven't used your computer or anything for your videos. You were going off cell phone and shit. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You were fucking pacing around in front of your house, ranting about the bottom of YouTube. Yeah. I can't even say well, shit. I used to. Dude, I need to have a character arc like that, honestly. Just fucking <laughs> going full mask off, unhinged, pacing around, ranting about fucking the Rock of Fire Mafia or whatever. Yeah, well, my computer eventually went out. Like, the cord that hooked up to my monitor went out. So I didn't have no way or money to get at the moment. So I'm like, I can't just leave and not make anything, especially since at the time, a lot of things going on with a Billy situation and everything else. So it's like <laughs> not very inconvenient timing. Yeah. Well, and plus, and plus like whenever I'm gone, it's funny because whenever I'm gone, someone always leaves a comment saying that, you know, someone is doing this and needs you to talk about it. So I'm like, Oh, Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's crazy how when we can't record videos, shit goes down, and then the moment we have like nothing else to do, there's like nothing to cover. Yeah, so I'm just yeah, like, there hasn't been shit to cover lately. I mean, I haven't mm-hmm. had a job in like almost a, probably a little over a month, and there hasn't been one fucking thing worth covering. Yeah, whenever the mafia drama was going down, I was working on that shit tirelessly two weeks straight. I remember a whole week had passed, and uh, I completely lost track of time. And then when I finally got the documentary uploaded, I was like, oh, I have this abundance of free time now. And it was, like, driving me insane. Yeah. So when you were working on that documentary, I would go onto Discord, click on your name, and I believe the latest that said one time was, like, 47 hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it said you were running Sony Vegas Pro for 47 fucking hours. And it would have been longer, but there were periods where I had to close out of my editing software because, like... The thing froze up and started glitching out, so I had to restart. Oh, I can imagine how much of a fucking mess it was. Oh, yeah, the render time for that video was at least five hours. That's how (laughs) much went into it. Yeah. I remember I was at MEPS getting a physical. Well, not at MEPS itself. I was at the hotel the night before because the military does things really fucking weird. I was at MEPS, and while I was at the MEPS uh, hotel, I was sitting there looking at the thing. I was like... You know, I got nothing else to do, and that's when I made that little shout-out that was at the end of the documentary, explaining how somebody needs to give you the slightest bit of fucking credit for the absolute grind you've been on with that documentary. That wasn't no small-ass video. This was not me reacting Mm -hmm. to Expense's fucking diss track. Funny video, but took minimal effort. Your shit, super serious video, was 50 fucking minutes long, and that shit took five hours to render probably by two weeks of you from the time you woke up to the time you put your fucking head on the pillow. Like somebody yeah. need to give you some form of credit for that itself. And I legit appreciated the fuck out of that because I was crazy burnout from that drama. I mean, we were hardcore underdogs, especially on Instagram because Travis could like shit out literally any narrative he could craft, get like over a hundred likes almost instantly. Yeah. His numbers obviously like trump all of ours because he's been in the community longer. I mean, he pretty much established the entire Rock of Fire community. So I realized, right, whenever I put out an Instagram post, my call out post, no matter what evidence I provide, is never going to compete with whatever Travis puts out. But on YouTube, we actually have a fair advantage. We have an edge that can compete with his Instagram platform. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's well, we, one of the we reasons have the YouTube why- edge. Yeah, well, that's one reason why. Because we're on YouTube. He has the Instagram edge because he's on Instagram. Realistically, we put out a 15-minute fucking video. Two Mm. weeks of work and silence. And, you know, that shit was scratching the back of our balls. Like, we were trying our best to keep our fucking jaws locked shut and not spill Mm. any information to this guy. 
And all this guy did at the end of it was put out two Instagram posts. One, attempting to gather up as much bullshit as he can and throw mm -hmm. a formula at you. This, do Monica Biss is also a piece of shit. Look what his ex-girlfriend said about him. Exactly. Or, yeah. fucking, this next post after that failed, he's like, I apologize for defending David. Uh, he didn't even apologize for it. He just said that he he feels wronged because mm. of what David did. Because I'm guessing some heat made its way that direction. Because he, mm. his first post failed. That was his well, backup. Yeah, yeah, it should have anyways. Because... <laughs> It's like, I, I don't understand what people is like, oh, yeah, well, his ex-girlfriend is doing this. And I'm like, they're not even anything, so I don't. <laughs> They've been separated for like two years now. Exactly. Yeah. And honestly, it's crazy hard to stay silent when this motherfucker is sourcing Princess Bubbles, putting out Instagram posts yeah. after Instagram yeah. post every yeah. day trying to make me out mm -hmm. to be a fucking pedophile. Well, that's one of the reasons why I made my videos that I made. Because I've been seeing this crap, I'm like, are, are you serious? Like, and then mm -hmm. having Princess Bubbles, which Princess Bubbles is saying, you know, he's irrelevant, but, you know, he's always going somewhere else trying to put crap on it. It's like, it's stupid. Yeah, I think Bubbles is like, he's not relevant as a source of information people go to, but he's relevant in the sense that he constantly and consistently manages to piss people off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's always, yeah, he always gives, like, false information. And I'm just like, you know, these people don't even care about facts or anything. And Princess Bubbles knows that. So he can just put in whatever and, you know, they'll just believe it. <laughs> exactly. They're a fucking power couple. <laughs> yeah. I know whenever Pika Love was making the fake accounts. And yes, I said when Pika Love is making the fake accounts. Bitch, if you're listening to this, we know you're behind the fake fucking accounts. Seriously, we could drop some fucking proof. We really don't care enough to fucking explain ourselves. We know you're behind it. And no fucking stupid narrative you can push is going to make it look like you don't make these accounts. When these fake accounts were initially being made, one was made of Princess Bubbles. Now, realistically, I don't think Princess Bubbles knows Discord from a fucking hole in the ground. And you know what else we noticed? That Princess Bubbles account had both Pika and Franker friended. Yes. Franker and Pika. Like, it's a hmm. little too convenient. And it yeah. messages me something along the lines of me writing postcards threatening fucking carpetbagger's niece. Yeah, car <laughs> carpetbagger's daughter or niece or something. Like, let's get one thing fucking clear. I don't give a fuck about the carpetbagger. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I, if, if I'm going to fucking threaten somebody, I'm not sending a postcard, bro. No. <laughs> and to his daughter of all people, like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense either. I believe he got a daughter. <laughs> yeah, really. But it doesn't make sense either because it's like you make a video on somebody and they automatically assume that you're, you know, uh, invest in that person. It's like, no, that's not the whole point of the video. I made one video, one video pertaining to the carpet bagger, I believe. Oh yeah, the the peak of bagger news skit. Oh yeah, I've completely forgot about that. But I mean, I made one that was simply a a gesture. At the carpet bagger because you made a video on how he like eats disgusting and shit, and yeah. I made a parody of how he eats by eating some fucking leftover Domino's pizza as an ASMR video, and oh, it yeah. was like the least uh, effort yeah, I've ever put video. into a video. My computer was what? down at the time, so I was literally just recording that with my cell phone just yeah. to think of something to put something on the page. Yeah, I mean a fucking Nick Cotto Avocado or whatever his name is can get millions of views off his mukbang videos, I think you can upload a Leftover Domino's video. Leftover Domino's is probably tastes better than all the shit he eats. He's a ticking time bomb of fucking death and diabetes. No, yeah, they added him to uh, Back for Blood, not as a playable character, but as an enemy that you shoot and it explodes. The Boomers? Uh, they're Boomers, <laughs> they just got a different name. I forget what they're called. Oh yeah, Back for Blood, the uh, unofficial sequel of Left 4 Dead. Walking on eggshells to repackage the game as legally as possible yeah it's um it's fun i've been playing it a lot it's um not a bad game at all it's everything that's in left for dead as far as special special zombies and shit well those have been pretty much split up into three different special zombies a piece there's like two different types of which um they're called snitches um it's actually funny as fuck 
It was the first time I encountered one. It was like near a cop, like near a cop car. I was like, oh, fucking Christ. They, they definitely set the scene on that one. Can we design a mod that turns one of the witches into Pikalov? <laughs> we need to now. <laughs> hey, if we got any mod developers in the Left 4 Dead community, oh, get man. on that shit. Yeah, really. We're about to make photorealistic Doom on Abyss, Breadstick 813, fucking Funfair and Sayori um, survivors. Oh yeah, that reminds me with the documentary. I had to render that shit twice because uh, the first time uh, the music was like drowning out Sayori's narration of Travis. Oh yeah, I remember watching through that. It was like trying to have a conversation in a club. I was like, oh my fucking god. Like, I know what she's <laughs> saying, but god, am I, is my ADHD beating my ass right now? Trying to yeah. focus. So that was 10 hours, actually, total of render time. Oh, yeah. Because you fucking had to take that video down and put the new one up. <laughs> Just change the audio down, like, what, 10%? Like, Yeah, something like that. That was rough. I was legit gonna cry. You no, know, what I will say, as far as YouTube, is, like, we, I think we are, the three of us, are hitting the peaks of our channels. I've been the least active out of the three of us. But my channel was hitting a pretty nice height there for a minute. Um, it probably would still be riding that wave. Yeah, but... I think there's going to be, like, multiple waves. I've had a few moments like this. Uh, I experienced this a while back when I uh, covered Factor for the first time. I got, like, thousands oh, yeah. of views right off the bat. And then uh, when the Factor drama died down, I was going back to 100-view videos. And I was depressed as fuck for mm. a bit. But then the Cavity Sam drama and Pete Fox stuff happened again. My views started spiking up and... Yeah, it, it just yeah, comes in waves. Pete Fox got my views riding a wave. It's Actually, crazy was... how many enemies that dude has made. And I didn't make the Pete Fox and Cavity Sam videos for views or ad revenue. I even put out an Instagram statement showing that uh, when Travis tried to make the claim I was exploiting victims for money, I put out an Instagram post showing that those videos were demonetized. I mean, I couldn't even monetize the Cavity Sam video if I wanted to because I used copyright music and I didn't make any effort to get rid of that. Those videos, to me, were emotionally motivated because I genuinely did care about the topics and wanted to bring that to the public spotlight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I was riding a nice little wave before the Pete Fox thing, but the Pete Fox, compared to the rest of my views, that Pete Fox video made my shit look like a tsunami. Yeah. But we're all hitting, like, what seems to be, like, a really nice wave. Well, you know, I was on the YouTube, YouTube scene. Channel got heated. <laughs> Say again, Touch. <laughs> oh gosh yeah, your videos lately have been fucking great but like you made that oh, video yeah. on Duonica Abyss it was a little rusty I'll say that much um, I think you would work a lot better if you like wrote your own script and just yeah. read it so you have less run on sentences less your words tangle around each other you don't repeat the same thing over and over but yeah. after that video you made the expense this reaction and at first I thought that was going to be like how we had those videos that I made a while ago how i said you uh you were pretty much just restating every point that i made in my videos you did yeah. that on like two videos and i thought it was going to be one of those mm -hmm. and you actually shocked the shit out of me because as soon as i started thinking that like the subversion of expectation came out of nowhere you were making your own points your great fucking mm -hmm. points on this guy and i was laughing my ass off like i was <laughs> weak in the knees watching that for the first time Mm. and like the, your sentences were formulated better you weren't yeah. saying the same thing nearly as much over and over and in the recent no. video about pika love dude we were all reacting to that live on the vc and laughing our fucking asses mm. off. i didn't even realize tim was in, in the vc <laughs> when we watched that <laughs> i was rolling i was trying to stay in my chair man that was mm. amazing like, I yeah. didn't realize how much information Tim was able to find on his own without restating any points that we've made. Yeah, I mean, I, I legit do my own research and everything to try to figure out every little detail or try to find as much detail as I can, at least. You did a great job in those handful of videos right there. Oh, yeah, the expense video. The expense video is fucking crazy. Watching that... Like I said, I thought it was going to just be a restate of everything I've said in my video. Well, I the thought Spencer's that... Spencer's fucking messages, man, they went ape shit. Mm. Well, to be honest, I thought that in your video, the points that you were making was 
totally outrageous, and I think you were being too nice. I think you're right. <laughs> because cause you were like, you know, he has good flow and all this other stuff. I'm like, no, get, the, get out of here. <laughs> like, hey, fuck being nice. What? Breadstick813 being too nice? I thought we were the villains. I thought we were the bad guys. <laughs> Yeah, right? I had to pretty much declare myself the biggest shitbag in the community in the documentary. I was like, hey, I'm the biggest shitbag in the community, but at least I'm well, not a pedophile. Exactly. <laughs> well, even, even that, though, like, your own person on uh, Piccolo, like, you were still being nice. Like, after oh, I'm all too nice. That, you know, after all of that, you were still being kind of nice to, to her, especially at the end of it. And oh, after yeah. all of that, all she had to do was, like, Honestly, just back off and do nothing, but no, she had a, you know... Oh, yeah, you were nicer than I definitely would have been. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. it's because I said I said the same thing to her that I would have said to Pete Fox. Yeah. Monica Biss would be wiping his ass with you right now. Oh, yeah. And that is not even a metaphor. See, I've said this before, but I'm a pretty battle-hardened person. Uh, when I see someone wrong, me or my friends, in, in the way these people have, there's... A zero forgiveness policy from me. I go full demonic mode. With Pika Love, I mean, this is a very cold, calculated person. And despite how many times I've tried to reason with her, I know that she's a lost cause entirely. You know, I go pretty far. I'll admit that entirely. But I don't brand myself as this saint who can do no wrong. I just try to do the right thing whenever I can. We have some ruthless bastards in our corner. I will be the good cop as much as possible, just because I'm trying to give you that benefit of the doubt. But yeah. I could just be as fucked up as they are. Yeah. If I want to, I could have that fuck that bitch mentality, which is the yeah. point she drove me to. But in that video, I s stress about how I didn't leak any of our DMs. It's true. Mm -hmm. Me and her have mm -hmm. DMs that have not seen the public eye. And it's because yeah. I told her I wouldn't leak them. I told her the conversation. I was like, I won't leak that. You could tell me whatever you want to say. And she's still sitting there per fucking catering to a makeshift camera that nobody's seen. Nobody's seen those messages. Yeah. But she's still sitting there fucking looking at a camera. There's mm -hmm. no camera. I can see well, why she would think there's a camera. Dude, but like, even after the fact... Even the comments he left on the documentary, she proudly leaves this fucking smug comment all like, It's me! Oh, yeah. How is that something to be proud over? Yeah, well, that's one reason why I went off on her like I did on that video, because I'm like, are, are you stupid? Like, like these people are, I mean, literally, the are yes. literally being nice to you, and, <laughs> like, geez. And we confronted her about it again in a group chat. I showed her the DMs of the stuff David was saying to that 14-year-old. On the off chance that maybe she didn't watch through the video and see any of the, of the screenshots. And there wasn't a real human reaction behind her responses. Instead of being mortified by the idea of this grown 40-year-old man attempting to get this nude picture of a child. Or playing dumb to these messages or trying to justify them as like a joke or something. Which some of these kids in denial are trying to do. She responds with this dumb, big, yummy copy pasta that people have been spamming all over Travis's post. They did the same fucking thing to me. It actually got me to chuckle that she knows what a fucking meme is. <laughs> she has been woke to the community of memes and copy pastas. And every time we've fucking, she's made a fake account after this, she has made a fake account. And if anybody confronts her, she just sends a stupid fucking meme. <laughs> At least he's learned something from being a demonic mod. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just send memes when you're under pressure. <laughs> when under pressure, make fun of everything. Except that is the wrong fucking moment, too, when someone's literally confronting you about a pedophile friend. Hey, we yeah, heard your real. friend's a pedophile. Big mommy milkers, lol. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's fucking bonkers. That was some crazy bitches in my life, man, but that... Fucking Christ. I'm glad I was extremely inactive in the Dumonic community during that time. Contrary to popular belief, me and Dumonic don't always get along. We're not always buddy buddy. There are times Money. we butt heads. And right before the peak of love drama, we butt heads briefly. And I took a step back 
I took mm. off notifications for a server. I needed a little fucking free time to, you know, mm. just kind of understand why me and him were butting heads. And he was a little distant on his end, too. And between the distance, we just eventually found our common ground again. And then right as soon as we find common ground again, fucking the peak of love raid shit happened. That was my first encounter with peak of love. I didn't even know she existed. I didn't know she was a mod or anything. I hadn't been in the Demonic server for months. <laughs> and I see this shit of her starting a raid. I'm like, here we go. And the crazy thing is, he was planning this for a while because uh, she made this fake demonic account back in, I want to say it was like June, and I saw it go into like Sayori's server, and this was like before Pika had any reason to fucking turn on me. This was like right after the Cavity Sam drama when we were like working together to expose her. It's actually bonkers to me that the fucking thing that was the catalyst to set her entire fucking in game in motion was you said that you wanted to partner with her to buy the what the fuck's it called circus playhouse band yeah you guys wanted to team up and buy the ip of circus playhouse band and me and you were coming up with good ideas getting some community input we brought an actual fucking thing to the table and just when she read the fucking title of it she didn't even didn't even give a shit. We had actual plans for Circus Playhouse. And that's what sent her fucking endgame emotions. She wanted it all for herself. She mm -hmm. literally just wanted you as a guy with a title, pretty much. Yeah, I think she wanted me as some sort of fucking attack dog. Before I even really knew who Cavity Sam was, she was constantly bringing her up in this, like, unhealthy, obsessive way. I think she had this, like, severe grudge against her because Andrea didn't want to partner with her and uh buy the so tapes together so may maybe her trying to get me and andrea to fight was like her uh way of revenge but in a weird way she couldn't even commit to it because now they're buddy buddy and uh when i was calling out andrea she wasn't really in the public spotlight she was all for calling out bobby but andrea she was in hermit crab mode over i don't know that was pretty peculiar i had a great idea I wanted to make a pretty much a cover of the song Going Through Changes. I don't know if that's what the song's actually called, but it's a really good song. It has a really good meaning to it. And it was pretty much the fucking characters describing their evolution after a traumatic event they all went through and then rebuilding the band at the end of it. Pretty much giving the fucking new characters a makeover. Charlie Chimp, which is my character, was supposed to... He was a fat guy. He was a fat-ass chimp, and he was, like, pretty much brain-dead. He was, like, Homer Simpson. Sorry, Homer. He's right here. <laughs> uh, he was, like, brain-dead, and my idea was to, pretty much, after the traumatic event, he would go become a fucking bodybuilder, shed his fat down, become buff as fuck. And embarked on the no-fat movement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he embarks on the no-fat movement as a way to get fucking strong in this iteration of Circus Playhouse, but realistically, that wouldn't even have been in the realm of possibilities had everything gone to plan that we originally intended. We had good intentions for Circus Playhouse. That's one character. Every other yeah. fucking character. It was a funny man's character. I forget what it was. I think it was a duck. Was supposed to join the fucking Air Force. <laughs> yeah, he went from duck to sex trot. <laughs> Yeah, like, this duck was supposed to join the fucking military and become part of the Air Force, because it's a duck, it has wings, like, and you know the yeah. fucking stigma around ducks, how they can't fly. We had a vision, which wasn't even a bad vision. When we straight up brought it to the table, she didn't even hear the shit out. And honestly, yeah, it would have been a really good theme for the community as a whole, the theme of moving on, because a lot of these people are genuinely stuck in the 80s. Yeah, that's painful. They're stuck on Chuck E. Cheese and fucking Rock of Fire. Like, Aaron Fector is like fucking 50, almost 60, I think. Like, he's an old ass man. Like, do you think he wants to sit here and keep making fucking animatronic content till the day he dies? Like, I mean, how it looks like with his career, I don't, I don't think so. It looks like he's about moved on from the Rock of Fire, other than like occasionally using it for uh, promotional stuff. Yeah, really. It's, he has lived out his name with that. And it's cool to see that he's left behind somewhat of a legacy, something of a community. But yeah. 
everybody fucking clings on to these things. Where is mm-hmm. something new? There's yeah, there's an animatronic community, but there's nothing new in the animatronic community. Where the fuck's anything that's been created in the last 10, 20 years? And we have this great idea to repurpose this old, unused IP and kind of flip it around, add development to existing characters. We were looking into these characters, looking into their personalities, looking at their shows and shit. I don't fucking watch Rock of Fire shows in my free time. I don't watch animatronic shit. I do. I could give a shit less about animatronics. But... For Circus Playhouse, I actually kind of was invested. I was watching shows and trying to fucking figure things out. We can pull to the table and add development to to create these same old characters as attached and lovable as they are, but now more developed, more lovable. And the Flotty Patty was having none of that. Yeah, God forbid you don't step on my fucking nostalgia. Disney Channel does mm-hmm. it all the time. Do I fucking... Go nuclear on Disney Channel? See, flat out said she'd rather just program the shows to play fucking royalty-free music. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and we're actually writing our own songs and shit. Yeah, mm. fucking Cartoon Network made Total Drama Daycare. Total Drama was like a staple of my childhood. I didn't run up on mm. fucking Cartoon Network's station with a machine gun and light that bitch up. Like, no, I just accept that that's what they want to do with that vision. Now, if you would have done that for Teen Titans Go, that would have been completely justified. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, facts. I don't even watch Teen Titans, bro, and Teen Titans Go looks fucking cursed. It, it, I, I'd rather eat drywall yeah. than watch Teen Titans Go. Same. Uh, let me just say, after after a while, they try to like do an actual story, but it still isn't going good. <laughs> You know what? I would love to see the black cyborg guy stomp the shit out of the very much smaller cartoony cyborg guy. The black cyborg guy? Um, Yeah, the only black cyborg in Teen Titans. I don't oh. know his name. <laughs> yeah, his name is Cyborg? Yeah, Cyborg. His name is Cyborg? Well, yeah. That's um, Cyborg. Very, very, very creative. creative. <laughs> yeah, it's different names. <laughs> a- intellectual move. Black Cyborg? <laughs> I-, I actually would be a cooler name, though. <laughs> black Cyborg? <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah, I think they didn't pick that for a uh, certain reason. <laughs> for a certain reason. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure somebody would get angry. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, look, man, every book... It's 2021. Every black superhero needs to have black in their name. Look, I mean, in facts, fucking... Yeah. Black Adam is the fucking new one that's coming out in DC where The Rock is... He's not even in black. I think the Rock yeah. is like Samoan. He might be half black. I'm not sure, but I know they're Samoan strong in his bloodline. Unless that's just what WWE lies about character de- development wise. Legit. When I was doing research on the, uh, <laughs> when I was doing research and going back on Demonic's like channel, going all the way back, I was literally watching his old stuff. <laughs> I was... Dude, I can't even watch 2017 me. Without, like, cringing to death. Oh my god, guys. Thank you so much for 30 subscribers. While I'm being drowned out by my fucking background music. Well, Dude, that, yeah. that was actually an amazing-ass timeline. I, yeah. I phrased it as this when I seen that. It honestly looked like you were making a documentary about Demonic Abyss's development over the years. But yeah. you had a secondary point of... Mm-hmm. The current drama, but if you yeah. only made a video about Demonic Abyss's development mm-hmm. from the beginning to the end of his YouTube career so far, yeah, like dude, that would be a kick ass video because yeah. watching that, that was beautiful. Yeah, well, I put in that part because I wanted people to see what they don't see nowadays, you know. Oh, yeah, so I wanted to put something that was more in general. So when they look at it, you know, they're like, wait, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> And like I said, I honestly did appreciate that because, like, both of you guys were around in 2019 when all of this was going down. And then Travis is going to put out this Instagram statement making it seem like I was tracking down a fucking 12-year-old. If I were doing something that deranged, I wouldn't be uploading YouTube videos about it. That was me, a 19-year-old at the time, trying to meet another 19-year-old I was in a long-distance relationship with. That dude barely knows what he's talking about, and he's sourcing Bubbles, who has a notorious reputation for... Putting out false yeah. information. Oh yeah, no shit. Uh, of all fucking sources of stupid shit, Demonic Abyss is done and said. That's mm-hmm. what you fucking round yourself off at? Go on his channel and look at shit he actually did. 
Yeah. It's we're not fucking saints. And in no point no. do we try to push ourselves as them. Yeah, we don't we don't brand ourselves as saints. I mean, I've always said, you know, just to be yourself and you know, if you get up there, you get up there. If not, then at least you're yourself, you know. Probably. I mean you can pander all you want and probably get big and all this other stuff, but then what happens next? Yeah, if you develop this fake persona, the moment yeah. you slip up, everything fucking crumbles. Yeah, so at the time that you're actually yourself, they're like, who, who is this guy? No, I'm just get out of here. I know Tim G's community, man. I remember when he had 200-something subscribers. I was the underdog sitting at like 90. I think it was between 90 and 120 whenever I originally called Tim G out. I was coming back from being on the downside of YouTube. I was pretty much dead. And then yeah. I came out the dirt. And I think my first fucking target, like, I came out that dirt. And mm -hmm. I look, I scanned the room. I was like, who's here? Tim G? Your your ass is mine. Like, yeah. I well, fucking, dude, you know, I, I went to wage war. Yeah. That, that, was, well, that, that was my objective. Upload, whenever you uploaded that video, I was a little bit confused. Because I was like, you know, because because before you uploaded that video, you were asking me, like, you know, for this, for this, for this. So I was a little oh, confused. I was trying to trick you. Well, I, and then when I watched the video. I guess it worked. Like, well, when I watched the video, like, legit, when I watched the video, video I was legit, like, angry. Well, it's because there was a video you put up, and um, you took it down. And people were sending clips of it. To me because they knew I was in the middle of working on a Tim G video. Yeah. But I couldn't get my hands on the full video. So I was asking you for the full video and you wouldn't give it to me. And I was like, what video? he's on, he's on kind of to me. Thing. I don't I don't even remember what it was. This was years ago. So there's I know there was a video that you took down. I don't know what you did in that video. I don't even remember what it was, but I think it was about doing Monica Biss. And um I think it was relating to the Claire situation again. No, no. Um I think it was uh, the carpetbagger video I put out. It may have been. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, like I, I, said, that one I have minimal memory of this. A couple of year or a year ago, actually, when the pandemic happened, uh, carpetbagger flocked to Pigeon Forge immediately as it reopened, immediately as uh, lockdowns were starting to ease up a bit. And I was pretty critical of that because, I mean, this was immediately after me getting laid off from my job, immediately after lockdowns started happening, and... Uh, to me, it seemed like he was ditching his family to go off and travel to cr travel from crowded place to crowded place, and uh, you know that was that was during the peak of the pandemic. Uh, I tried not make, I tried not to make videos about like corona righteousness, but uh, this seemed like a pretty extreme case, and I, I wanted to see these uh, restrictions ease up as soon as possible. Yeah, it, I that, know. that video was supposed to be a joke and just went totally bad. <laughs> Like, yeah, I think the, if it was a joke, it definitely went over everybody's heads because... Yeah. Well, well, it's funny, too, because after that video came out, Demonic even texted me. <laughs> even messaged me. I was like... <laughs> Yo, I was like, what the fuck, <laughs> man? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> You're like, no, it's funny because uh, you text me, like, is, is this a joke? This better be a joke. I'm like, yes, it, it's just a joke. Calm down. <laughs> And like I, I know that whenever the Claire situation originally happened and you made your video, like I noticed it at the time and I looked at it, I was like, you know, I because Dumonica Biss sent it to me, he was like <laughs> something along the lines of this guy has no fucking clue what he's talking about, and I agreed. I was yeah. like, Yeah, this dude's fucking bonkers. Like, where is he getting this shit from? I understand yeah. the bottom of YouTube at that time was spreading a lot of misinformation, and yeah. I understand it was super fucking easy. For you to pretty much just catch the wrong fucking wave. Well, and... I think I didn't even look at anybody else. I, I think because I was just looking at Demonic's video on the situation, and I think I just got some stuff wrong. That, that was on me. Like, totally oh, yeah, on me. That's, because... why, that's why I made another video just apologizing. I'm like, I. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah, because I think it was like you made an apology video afterwards, and then you made another yeah. video on him. And that's whenever I drew the line, I was like, fuck this, yeah. we're not having this situation. Yeah. And something that nobody in the bottom of YouTube knew, until I hopped on the loose gun train, whenever I uh, went to basic training, right before, um, yeah. I pretty much had a small rivalry with loose gun, Molly May, etc. Mm -hmm. 
I was pretty much jumping into Demonic Abyss's corner at the bottom of YouTube. Bro, the fucking... The Mafia has me missing having Lou as an enemy. Like... <laughs> they, they're fucking weird. Because... Yeah. The, I hopped into the bottom of YouTube, and they're sitting there fucking roasting me, and I'm like, I don't think you understand. I'm, I'm, rec I'm recording this shit off a cell phone right now. I'm not pulling yeah. any punches. This video is simply to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Like, not anything I say is probably going to be true. And I pretty much sat there and fucking roasted them. Roasted them. Made fun yeah. of their comments. Made fun of their videos. It's literally just hopping into Monica Business Corner. Yeah. And so they never knew this, but I've been around for as long as me and Demonica Bisca fucking remember. Yeah. Like, we were 11 years old when we met. We started, I started YouTube before he did. He dedicated himself to YouTube way before I did. I didn't start mm -hmm. taking YouTube seriously until I realized how good he was at it. And I was like, fuck, yeah. this kind of inspires me to take my channel seriously. I probably had like 50 subs before he even had his first one. And he, by the time I made it to 100, he probably had like three, 300. Yeah, for Me a while. Had a dynamic for a long time. Yeah. And so when I hopped into the bottom of YouTube, I pretty much put my foot down as I'm in his corner, whatever he says goes. And yeah. that, that was like our first encounter together against an opponent. And dude, that tag team was fucking brilliant. Then I went out to basic training. I came back. I looked at your videos, seen your thing, talked to Dumonic about it. He pretty much said, dude, that's the perfect fucking rivalry right there. 100 versus 200 subs. Like, yeah. there's not an incredible fucking gap there. And, and not that I don't mind being seen as, like, the fucking puppet master of that whole drama, but, like, if I make a video criticizing Tim G, there, there was a fucking pretty big sub gap difference between me and him at the time i was approaching a thousand subs uh it seemed a bit redundant for me to fucking make a video on him but i figured you know a battle between you guys would actually be fair and entertaining and it was something nobody else really knows is during the claire shit me and him were texting all day every day aside from him and claire i was the only other person who had a fucking lick of a idea what was going on in the situation and in his head. So, like, whenever yeah. I seen your video, it pissed me off, yeah. Because yeah, you didn't have the right information. But at the time, I wasn't thinking, maybe yeah. he doesn't have the right information because nobody fucking gave him the right information. So, like, yeah, at the time, it was appropriate to make that video in my yeah. own mind. Well, now, looking thing back is, though, at it... Yeah, well, the thing is, though, is that whatever you said about Demonic, I agree. I was totally wrong. But... It's when you went on Madam is when I really... That's when I went wrong. I really lost it, because I'm like, no, you're, you're not going to be making things up. And also, you put clips out of, like, context, too, which was kind of hilarious. That, that was not me intentionally putting things out of context. That was me oh, not I knowing some popcorn context. for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting spicy. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I, like the, I like the dynamic P, me and Tim got right now, because we both know where we and each other went wrong. He went yeah. wrong on the demonic information. I went wrong on the madam information. Yeah. And we both can agree on that. I know I went wrong in the madam situation. Because realistically, I only went into those videos to find things on you. Yeah. I didn't go into those videos to educate myself on what happened with madam. Yeah. All I seen was a trend showing. You and yeah. madam were friends. You were buddy-buddy. She was supporting you. You were supporting her. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're against her. And I'm not even trying to find out why. I was just kind of looking to find shit on you. Yeah. And that's what I well, found in the end is I found shit on you. But yeah. looking back at it, I'm just like, wow. Like, you know how much more interesting that could have been if I would have fucking paid attention? Yeah, legit. Like, I, I don't know. That whole thing was just... <laughs> because even, like, my response to you was horrible. Because, like I said, right when you went to the madam thing is when... Because I, I think in my response to you, I actually left for a bit. In the video, oh, yeah, I, was, I remember that. I was, I was that angry. I actually left for a bit because I was like, I have to cool down. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we have a great clip. I'm sure Demonica fucking play it when he puts it on screen, <laughs> bro. We have an amazing clip from that video, dude. I might be a fucking psychopath. I love saving clips of fucking meltdown shit. 
you know how many times I played that fucking Billy Rand's video of him being like, Oh, hey, demonic abyss, you're a toxic fucking troll. <laughs> Demonic Abyss, you're a toxic fucking troll. That's all you are. You mean, mean, little egotistical little prick. Yeah, you little fucking prick cockroach. <laughs> Does you go on a full fucking blown rant, bro? You really want me to support someone that is like this? You don't know the whole detail that is in this situation. So don't say all this crap, okay, that I betrayed Madam, okay? Because you don't know the whole story behind it. If you would have done your research, you would have known that Madam is a horrible, horrible human being that lied, deceived, that tried to make this 15-year-old like out to be a horrible person. And Madam is, almost, is 20 or almost 20 years old. She has done crimes. So don't be saying, oh, 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 I, uh, I betrayed Madam. Because you don't know the whole detail. Are you saying that you don't care about the details? Are you freaking serious? Look, if you want to support someone like this, that is on you, okay? This crap really pissed me off. I'm not going to lie to you. Whenever I heard this crap, it really pissed me off. And for a demonic to support this idea, to support him on this point saying that oh i didn't get the whole both of the stories probably when you know everything that she has done okay she has made this 15 year old cry literally cry in tears so don't say all this crap that i i betrayed people okay because you don't know a god dang thing because madam has lied deceived stole her own fans money for drugs a purse and even to go to a concert because she tricked everyone that she was going to sue Onision, okay her own fans so don't be saying all this crap okay so you better get the details next time because this crap really pissed me off and look my video my video got the reaction i wanted out of you because my video was to piss you off it was to wage war it was pretty much yeah. to create a fucking rivalry when i seen your response video dude not gonna lie, I had no clue who the fuck Tim G was. I've only watched a handful of your videos at that point, and whenever I was looking at this, I was like, this motherfucker's not about to pull a single punch. That's when Tim sort of dropped the diss track, honestly. It would have went so fucking hard. Like, <laughs> when Tim G doesn't pull punches, Tim G goes fucking hard. Because, dude, I was... Every time you dropped the video on me, I've instantly got red in the stomach. It wasn't like I was sick, like I was going to barf, like, you know, when you yeah. think of your girl fucking somebody else. It's not like that feeling. It's yeah. that feeling of, I may have fucked up. <laughs> Expense dropped his dish track, I never once got the feeling that I may have fucked up. When yeah. you dropped your dish track, dude, I got the feeling in my stomach. I may you have met, fucked up. You messed up, homie. <laughs> yeah, I may have got... <laughs> Every time Tim G has made a video on me, the first thing that has come to mind is, I probably just fucked up big time. Yeah. Our rivalry was fun. And it's gonna be fun as fuck to look back at. The fucking clip that Dumonic has of, like, we. I think he named the, the file, like, Tim G Meltdown or something like that. <laughs> Dude, the file is funny as fuck because it got the exact reaction I wanted. And mm -hmm. looking back at it, I'm like, me and him really were headbutting the dog shit out of each other yeah. for consecutive videos. That was like oh, your yeah. first introduction to YouTube drama face to face. It wasn't like you were looking from an outside window. No. It's me and you were actually well, at each other. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, too, is that also, like, at that time, too, um, you know, I was also, like, making videos on all the other people, you know, in spite of Demonic. And it's kind of funny, too, with that whole Dimanic, is when I was making videos on Molly Mae and Lou for you guys, it's like nothing else really happened with my channel, you know, really, uh, well, you know. <laughs> you did get a lot of uh, exposure off the of Madam drama, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, he got a hell of exposure off to Madam drama. But me and him, honestly, we became, like, on the same level. We pretty much took each other's spotlight. Because as much as you had a lot of numbers, I had active mm -hmm. viewers. Yeah, like, and it was, it was an actual, mm -hmm. like, fair, honest battle. You guys were doxing each other, or insulting no. each other's mothers, or going for the fucking throat. Like, and, Travis yeah. with these fucking well, pedo allegations. Yeah. Well, and whenever we, we are now... <laughs> <laughs> like when we figured out we were wrong in like both our situations, we talked about it like normal people should, and we 
<laughs> like solved it. The diss tracks were fun to make. They definitely ex- exercised my creative freedom, and they were really, really fucking fun to make. Like, yeah, I think I think the second one was better. You think the first uh, one was better? Like, yeah, I think the first one. Was I understand why you think so because you're not the only person I've he- heard say the first one was better. Yeah, I, I honestly think your first one went harder. But like the second one was like that. That was the um the. It was the dynamic of Killshot and um, Killshot and uh, Rap Devil that MGK and Eminem had. That's what I was going for with that. I wanted you to mm-hmm. make another response. I I wanted you to win that. I still do. Mm-hmm. Like if you made if you made a fucking diss track tomorrow, dude, I would literally lay down my fucking weapon and say that you won, no matter how bad it would be, just because I respect the fact mm-hmm. that you did it. It realistically, you can't do as bad as Expense did. Expense's <laughs> diss track hit so much less than yours. Yeah, just don't get Expense on your track, and you should be gone. <laughs> yeah, all you gotta do is look at Expense and do the exact opposite, but do Rhyme. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing Expense did good was Rhyme. Even that, he fucked up. He didn't even do that great, I don't... <laughs> Expense barely fucking... barely rhymed half his things. Yeah. Well, his thing is too, like, my thing is whenever I try to make a song, my first thought is to have it flow with the next stuff. Like, you can have it rhyme, you can have it all this other stuff, but if it doesn't flow, it's not even, it's not going to sound good at all. Oh, yeah. Um, If it doesn't flow into the next bar, then. And if you look at my songs, like, yeah, they don't do that, but they flow with the next stuff. Like, at least I, like, at least I get that part. And everything yeah, I else. consider you, your music more of um freestyle poetry because it doesn't rhyme, but it's considered music somehow. Yeah. But it's more of a poetic thing than anything because sometimes you do have some actually like sometimes you actually have some really fucking cool uh like metaphors and stuff in there. I'll be like, oh, that was good. Yeah, I'd say your delivery is really good as well. Like you put a lot of power into your vocals and passion. Oh yeah, he puts a lot of power in vocals. I'm bad at that. I'm monotone as fuck. Now, home for the holidays, I literally didn't accept any criticism because that was good. I put a lot into that. But Dirty Deeds, I got fucked with so bad for that. Dude, I took it off my channel. I got made fun of that bad. I actually had to enlist it. Actually, I think I had to private it because even after that, people were showing me the fucking video and making fun of it. Like, I put some fucking passion into that. Yeah. And I got shit on. <laughs> yeah. I think I have that still in my computer. <laughs> well, I think I think you um you made like a remaster of Dirty I Deeds. made so I made a remaster. I boosted like your voice up a little bit over it. It was hard to do that because it was all already together. So it was difficult to put it kind of together in a way that I wanted it, but it boosted a little bit. Ooh, so you you've, got some, you've got some blackmail now. You got the dirty deeds file on your yep. computer. <laughs> I don't even know if I've made that public or anything yet. I probably did make it public by now because you know you can't run from it. I mean, we all we've all made a bad song before. If you've made yeah. a song, you've made a bad one. Yeah, I don't know what you guys are on about. We are number one, Kingdom Come and Money Machine. We're all bangers, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're only halfway to my potential. <laughs> Don't worry. Once you hit, I think it's like number, number. Yeah, your fourth one probably is gonna hit fucking rock bottom. I'll make sure song number four is in the diss track. Won't you um just make track number four intentionally garbage so you don't hit the garbage one unintentionally after that? Big brain. That is true. I know. I at some point I want to get me you on a track. I want to get me and Doll Z on a track because I know you follow Doll Z on Instagram. I don't know if you follow her on Twitter. Um, she's the Indian girl that's always doing dances and shit. I don't know you how little tell that her to follow about. me on Twitter. What the fuck? She follows okay. both of you guys, but not Demonic Abyss. <laughs> Fucking bullshit is this? She doesn't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Link her my channel right fucking now. Send her money channel machine. right fucking now? <laughs> yeah. No, because she was supposed to call me at some point, and I don't know when she plans on doing that. If I call remind her, and tell her, her to watch gonna... a bunch of demonic abyss videos. Fucking Christ! 
Hey, run my fucking ads. <laughs> yeah. Z is really cool. Um, I don't know how she ended up following me. I think I left a comment on the Eminem uh, fucking tweet one time. Tell her she's no longer cool until she follows me on fucking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't remember. Christ. Yeah, I don't remember how we followed each other either. I don't. I, Bro, I'll I, fucking make a diss track on her over that. <laughs> fucking Christ! I'm not gonna lie. That might you might want to wait till number five for that. <laughs> number four, <five. laughs> you're, you're gonna be all lucky today. Number four is the curse. <laughs> number four is the curse song. You, you, your fourth song cannot be a diss track because it's cursed. <laughs> the number four, the number four spot, is cursed. You you could diss her number five. You'll be fine. You'll be back on track. But four is the cursed one. Might as well intentionally make four garbage. But like Dalsy's, she's really cool. We talk on a regular basis. Um, mm-hmm. One of the very few internet friends I have. Really, we have a great dynamic. Um, she's. A way fucking better rapper than me. <laughs> like, she would fucking kill me. She's even brought it up a couple times. She was like, why don't me and you diss track each other for fun? I was like, because I'm not going to go for the throat, and you're not going to go for the I'll throat. I'll go for the fucking throat. <laughs> You'll go for the fucking throat. You're the one fucking abyss. Damn straight. And he's just mad because she's not following. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> He's about to go through every song she's ever fucking made and just conjure up as many roasts as he can. About to drop you messed up homie on steroids. You messed up bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said name the song. You messed up bitch. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh uh. That sounds like song number four right there. <laughs> you messed up bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it the Tim G track, but all you do is just say you messed up, bitch, yes. over top of it in different fucking autotune, like, sounds. And I rap over Tim's lyrics as well. Like, I don't even hide the original song. You, you use background. Tim's entire fucking lyrics as the background. Yes. She's like, what the fuck is going on over there? Uh, Absolute chaos. I don't know what it. you're talking about. Song 4 sounds like a banger. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Dalzy is like one of the coolest fucking rappers I've ever met. Because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too big into the rap scene or anything like that. But yeah. like, she's really cool. She's really dedicated to it. She lives in India, so obviously, mm-hmm. uh, she's has a bit of a complication when it comes to finding labels and shit to yeah. promote well, her music. I, for. Yeah, mm-hmm. the last time I was talking to her, which was like a long time ago, she was saying that. She was planning on trying to come down here sometime. Oh yeah, she was talking about um, she was talking about possibly moving to New Jersey. Me and her discussed that recently. She said that fell through. I'm not going to okay. spill her beans too much because we do talk on a more personal note. So I'm not going to spill too many of her beans, but I would really like to see her come to America. Like, yeah, that would be fucking awesome. Yo, I Even spill all her fucking beans. I need this dirt, man. <laughs> Just she follows me on fucking Twitter. <laughs> fucking Christ. I mean, if you don't follow Demonic Abyss on Twitter, that, that's the diss track right there. Yeah, I'm straight. Stupid bitch, you ain't winning <laughs> shit. You don't follow Demonic Abyss on Twitter. You, you fucked up, bitch. After I deal with Expense, as far as a diss track goes, I do want to get on Expense track. It's He's not going to get on a Breadstick A13 track. I'm going to have to come on his terms with that. So, well, you know, he's definitely it, not going to be on track with me. <laughs> I, I would be curious to see you two go at it. Because one thing is, him, you will do your research. Expense will mm-hmm. not do his research. Right, I would. Expense blind fired at me. He knew nothing about mm-hmm. me. We played D&D together, and he literally yeah. just reacted to the shit that I talk. He didn't actually go in on me. Most of the shit he dissed me about, the public image doesn't even know. He made a remark that my body count was seven. Literally, YouTube does not know that my body count is seven. They don't care. Yeah. Well, he made. He also made a stupid line like "I'm your like I'm Mister Steal Your Girl" or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm Mister Steal Your Girl. Me and your shot to keep it tight. Like he's not stealing nothing, but like other lines or something. <laughs> <or nothing. laughs> yeah. He, I mean, short enough, he might make an excellent tick pocket. <laughs> the guy's like five foot tall, bro. He makes that line, but like I said, he knew nothing about me. He was blind yeah. firing. I don't have a girl. I'm not even romantically involved with anybody. And yeah. at the time that he released that, I wasn't. 
What the fuck? Time. Has our relationship been a lie? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want you to find out like this. Hold the fuck, say that again. <laughs> Hold the fuck, say that again. <laughs> You're like mad at random Indian people. <laughs> random Indian people? <laughs> You're like mad at random Indian people who don't even follow Demonic Abyss on Twitter. <laughs> Right now I'm focused on getting this expense dish track out, but after the expense dish track, like the, the this fucking podcast type thing we got going on here today, that right yeah. there is pretty much setting a foundation for Breadstick Eight One Three and Tim G need to be on a fucking track together. Demonic Abyss is invited. That's if he wants to be. Oh, I'd be down. I'd be down to fuck around on songs and shit. I mean, Flat Ass Patty was a fucking banger. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was like the <laughs> world's best thirty second banger. Tim, what did you think of my um Dr. Breadstick video on you? Like, I, I tried to be funny with that. What no, did you I, think legit, that I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. <laughs> like, legit. I was laughing. I gotta ask. Where the fuck did the autism joke originate? <laughs> I, look, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just simply, you don't know. <laughs> well, I do actually... Well, okay. So, that actually... I, that came from Molly May. Legit, she put that around um, of saying that oh, I have like uh, that I have like autism or something. I don't know. Yeah, Molly put that in her video, and then uh, yeah. me, Meta, and Breadstick started leaving a bunch of troll comments. So like, <laughs> you're so brave for coming out, Tim. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie. I was against. I was against it at first. Yeah. Well, I, I was mean, definitely against the well, troll Meta comments, posted that comment. Like, you know it was what, like fun, it. it was funny as fuck when Meta commented yeah. that, and we had to. It's because fucking Meta is like the only base yeah. human, <laughs> base female on Earth. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny too because she like said that, and she was like serious too. Like she wasn't kidding at all. She was serious. She really thought I had these like issues or something. Wait, Molly so or I was Meta? Like, uh, Molly. Oh, okay. No, 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 not her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she legit thought that I had these, like, issues. And, you know, th the first time that she really went at me is when I was talking to Ox because Ox, um, like, I, I was in his comment section and he was talking bad about her. I was, like, defending her. And Molly May came in, like, to a comment saying that, you know, don't, don't you dare be talking about me to Ox. You're the only person that, like, talks to Ox and, you know, something else. I know your information. Uh, YouTube gave me your information. I have these uh, resources. And, uh... Well, she wouldn't have your information because, like, you didn't, uh... Yeah. Write, appeal the, uh, copyright strikes. No, but she's like, YouTube gave it to me, and I have, you know, resources. I'm like, that good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, YouTube wouldn't have it. No. They don't, I'm I don't like, think they even release you. it over copyright strikes unless the no, other person no. is like threatening a lawsuit. What would they release? You don't have to put certain information at YouTube. It's not like you need an address in your account to Well no. when you get copyright struck you do have to put like an address and a phone number so the other person can contact you if they decide yeah. to like pursue legal action. Oh. Yeah, yeah no, I, mean, I never had to go through any I got yeah. struck. Well the thing but is my though appeal was over in Dave. Yeah. Thing is though, I couldn't even like appeal or anything. Like my channel was just I couldn't get in, and then YouTube was like, yeah, sorry, can't really help you. <laughs> and, you know, that that was funny, too, because in that comment, I was really, like, defending her, and she came at me. I'm like, Where, where's this coming from? It's like, I'm sorry that I talked to people that uh, that you don't like. I, I do apologize. Are we talking about Ox PMA? Because I made a video on Ox PMA a long time ago. It's because Ox PMA printed out fucking shooting targets with Demonic Abyss's face on them. And in my video, I went fucking nuclear. I remember that. I don't know if we're talking about Ox PMA or not. Or if there's, yeah, yeah, there's another the Ox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same one. Okay, yeah. I went fucking nuclear on him for it. Yeah. I've seen that was... video. It's like a two minute video or less. Yeah. Of him printing out I demonic mean... bitch shooting targets, and I fucking snapped. Yeah. I made a couple on him um, back, but yeah. I've seen he's been less of a fucking crackhead since then. Like, I haven't seen him doing anything crazy. Yeah, same with Molly. Both of them have kind of tamed. Yeah. 
Molly, I think she just realized that there's nobody to pick on anymore. Ox, I think he may have went to one, like, terrorist rehab. Well, the thing with Ox is, like, Ox was already, like, brainwashed, especially from, like, Ness and Billy and them. Yeah, he was ride or die for them for a bit. Yeah. I don't even know who the fuck I mean, Nez is. Yeah, I made, like, a couple of videos on him and everything. I don't and know, I paid jack shit attention during that arc. Nez is fucking bad shit. Sees uh, Billy's online girlfriend in Ohio. She believes the earth is flat. Sees a hardcore mm-hmm. anti-vaxxer. <sighs> I could have uh, stopped that sentence watches Ohio. watches Derpy Jack. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do recognize her from Derpy Jack. She was all in oh, his comments. Um, yeah, and I made it. Like, you could have ended um, that sentence at Ohio, and I would have just accepted she's a crazy bitch. She does these, like, painting fucking streams, and uh, she has, like, a fucking close up of her hands while she draws. Her hands look like fucking, <laughs> like, the ghouls from Fallout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I made, like, me. council of, like, videos on, like, that whole group. Like, I made, like, a, a legit, like, cult, like, Christian fake cult video. It's pretty much more like a cult, honestly. Which was on that whole... Yeah, it's funny, too, because after I made that video, uh, everybody was calling them, like, a cult. <laughs> it caught on. But no, legit. Like, they are legit a cult. <laughs> yeah, dude, getting into drama, like, you've actually held a really good upper hand on drama since you've been on your new channel. Yeah. And, like, you are at the point now where you don't even have to engage in drama to pull views. You didn't engage in drama at all on your last handful of videos that related to me mm-hmm. and Duonic Abyss, but those were really good videos, and they got half decent views. Yeah, well, yeah, and I kind of like I kind of changed my style too, as far as like my intro and just how it is as well. Um, especially like whenever I came back, like whenever I got my computer back and everything, and made that you know like. Um, I'm back, but not, but like things have changed or something. Like, I knew I had to make like a, a big, huge video and like changes when I came back because I couldn't make like the same stuff that I used to make. So I knew I had to come back with something else. So I started working a lot more harder on like the editing and like the intros and like, you know, like the same thing, like the intro that I did for, um, for your video, Breadstick. Dude, watching that actually went hard. Like, Fucking watching some of those videos, like the way you had the background with mm-hmm. the like the brown smoke type thing going on, yeah, like, that, that that one fucking crazy, and then the music behind it definitely served it right. You you did mm-hmm. your intro fucking justice, and then after that you fucking actually played your intro cinematic, and then started your actual video. That was really good play. Yeah. I can't wait till I fucking drop this expense dish track. Um, yeah, legit, legit. Like I've been waiting for like ever since I've heard like you know you're gonna like do a response and even hearing that he's gonna you know redo it. Like I've been here pumped up. <laughs> oh yeah, because I ma- I made it very clear. I was like, expense is already working on the fucking part two. Yeah. Like because he said he was fucking intoxicated in the studio when he made that and he rushed it and i don't fucking believe that because i told him months ago to make that and i was hyping it for months i even told people i was like hey expense is gonna make a video or a fucking diss track on me lol he waited up until the day he was in the studio to make it when the hype was at its lowest nobody was even worried about him at that point and he fucking drops that and i was like okay i guess i'm yeah well, you know, I even made that comment in my video. I'm like, isn't this the same guy that, like, said he was better than him, like, a month ago or something? <laughs> yeah, I was like, like... I'm like, okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I I can handle sportsmanship, but don't yeah. make a fucking bad diss track on me, bro. <laughs> you can make yeah. a diss track on me, and you can lose the battle. But you can't make a bad diss track on me. I'm the easy, most easily disciplined person in the fucking world. I go, I could... Yeah throw a plate of ammo out right now. Yeah. I look like fucking Sid from Toy Story. I look like Sheen from Jimmy Neutron. I dropped out the army. Dirty yeah. Deeds was a shit song. That's four fucking things right there that you could craft eight bars off of. Your name is There's literally no after a food. Like, you name yourself after a food. <laughs> You're friends with Dalsy who doesn't follow Demonic Abyss on Twitter. 
Dalsy would fuck <laughs> expense up. Dalsy would turn expense into a ball of fucking pubes, bro. Yeah. Dalsy would wash him with his own asshole. <laughs> Dalsy would squeeze that motherfucker so hard that he would turn into a ball of soap. Yeah, she don't, she don't even need to make like a whole district, just like a line. And there you go. <laughs> oh, she sent me lines. I told her I can't use them. I mm-hmm. told her this dish track has to be from me and me only. Because yeah. if anybody else puts their input in here, look, let's yeah. be real. I know Expense was in the fucking studio with mm-hmm. the people who literally just milk him for money because realistically his music is kind of shitty. Um, yeah. His music's kind of shitty. Uh, Crushing wasn't a bad song. I'll give him that. Crushing wasn't bad, but Wannabe killed him on his own beat, bro. Oh, <laughs> How do yeah. you get a guy to feature on your song and he kills you on it? Mm-hmm. Like expense wasn't even fucking. He wasn't bad, yeah. but wannabe made him look bad. Yeah, well, it's funny too because I was actually considering on helping you a little bit. I'm like, nah, he like he needs to get it his own self. Like, <laughs> I want I want the song to absolutely humble him. Yeah, and after I deal with the expense, after I deal with expense, then I'll make a song with you and a song with Dalsy, like. I'll actually work on making songs on things, not on people. But the thing about Expense is he doesn't research his his fucking foes. You at mm-hmm. least took the time to fucking watch my videos to research me a little bit and to yeah. kind of talk about how you know who I am and what you think mm-hmm. of me. He literally yeah. just based his shit off of the shit that I said. Yeah. Dude, you, you would kill mm-hmm. Expense in a fucking diss track. Well, my... The would fucking kill Expense yeah. in the diss track because Expense doesn't research his opponents. He doesn't know anything about them. He doesn't find ammo. If yeah. you made a diss track on you, I already know how it would go. Monotone yeah, ass different. white boy fucking talking about how you're off brand rice gum. That's all he would have to say is that you're some off brand rice gum. He's going to well, make that he'll... comparison to three yeah. different YouTubers over the course of the song. Well, he's going to talk about how you have a mullet. <laughs> he's gonna have a line like that i'm gonna leave you alone i can already see it oh yeah no doubt well that's At why least. he needs to be humbled because some people need to fucking lose to know how to win like he legit yeah. thinks he's untouchable so that's why he's putting zero effort into these fucking disses because he's that fucking confident yeah like he's way more confident than he should be i've been holding back i haven't released my diss i haven't even been working on it because yeah. i need to understand that in order to humble him I have to do the opposite of what I always do I always mm-hmm. rush a song out I always force it mm-hmm. I cannot force this one or I'm not going to get what I want done like when you get your ass handed to you that badly the fucking for the first time you use that as a learning experience to do whatever it takes to make sure that situation doesn't happen again yeah and he's the type of person that he's not going to learn That's that's the worst part about this is it doesn't matter how bad I fucking diss him, he's not going to learn. Like, yeah, if you be... listen to his music, I've went mm-hmm. through his music, man. I've wrote bars pertaining mm-hmm. in referencing his past music. Oh, yeah. Like, I should have done this with yours, but I didn't, yeah. simply. Like, I simply didn't go into a background of your music and yeah. pull things. No. If I would have done that, my disses would have hit so much more. Well, yeah, same. But I mean, at same least here. what I did was make fun of what you do on YouTube because that's the platform yeah. I know you from. Expense didn't even bother to look at my YouTube channel. Yeah, dude, you want to diss me? My YouTube channel's right here, three hundred <laughs> subscribers. Go for it. Yeah. Instead, yeah, he I makes this why... about my body count. Which like, don't nobody give a fuck if I fuck seven girls or if I fuck two. Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, and it's not like you have a crazy big catalog of videos to go through either. It was just pure laziness on his part. Yeah. He, his disses are about his nickname. Yeah, they call you breadstick because I bet you got a bread dick. Fucking great job, Expense. You figured it out. My dick is made of bread. <laughs> yeah, how is that even a roast? Here. What the fuck? <laughs> pure yeast here, brother. Pure well, it's yeast. Funny like... It's funny, too, because he made, like, two lines naming the same thing. <laughs> See, if I was writing a bar based off your name, I'd go with something like, oh, this bread's gone stale. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> bread's gone f- you, you came up with that in, what, the last five seconds? <laughs> yes. It took no effort <laughs> to make that. All you gotta do is rhyme that with something. And yeah. look, you just created a bar. Yeah, and, man, so many, like, monologues, too, in a song. Like, 
<laughs> monologue after monologue after monologue. Goodness gracious. Well, like I said, with my issue is I have emotional attachment to some bars. His emotional attachment is I'm a moon goon. Look, I live in Pittsburgh. There's no such thing as a fucking moon goon. <laughs> if you, moon if, goon? If, no, he's talking about moon township. Bro, if you live in moon <laughs> township, there's nothing to flex there. Not a single fucking thing. You're close to a college. That's about it. Otherwise, there's. it's not like you're living in fucking Northview Heights where you have some sort of fucking gang reputation or gang presence that you can base yourself off of. It's not like you live in fucking Brighton or Spring Hill where there's at least some sort of gang presence to establish yourself on. No, dude. You live in fucking Moon Township. I'm a clarion contrarian. <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> like, fucking Christ. Like, <laughs> Like, you hear this shit? Like, it'd be like a fucking Nevada cop on the track and called himself that. You know how fucking dumb he would sound? Well, I could probably make it sound pretty cool. Well, you could make it sound cool, but he clearly did not make that sound cool. <laughs> moon goon. Like, living in Moon Township ain't nothing to be fucking proud of, bro. We get it. You're white. That's a less of a reason you should be making rap music. What the fuck is old guy from Moon making rap for? Tim, what, what state do you live in? Uh, Georgia. Oh shit! I want to. Yeah, George is pretty base. Yeah, yeah. Dude, look, look. You, you live around like fucking the world capital of black people, man. You're allowed to say whatever <laughs> fuck you want on the track. <laughs> look, I, I went to basic training in Fort ben Benning, so I was in Georgia. So like, you can say whatever the fuck you want on the track because you ain't from Moon. <laughs> His entire objective with that diss track was to talk shit. His objective wasn't to beat me in a diss track battle. So I told him he has until I release mine to make a second one. If the second one doesn't fucking kill me, then I'm going to kill him, like, with the first one. It's a full moon and you're about to go werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Christ. I, I cannot get over fucking moon goon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking Christ. Yeah, for a moon goon. Like, clarion contrarian sounds better than that. <laughs> Like, it'd be like if fucking Tim G called himself the Atlanta Slammer. Like, that that would sound fucking cleaner, bro. Like, you cannot call yourself the fuck. And that's the second track he called himself that on. This is the second track he has called himself the Moon Goon on. <laughs> that should be his rap name, the Moon Goon. <laughs> Just drop expense entirely. I mean, expense isn't a bad name, but um, six other people on SoundCloud have that name. Luckily for him, no one else is dumb enough to call themselves the Moon Goon. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. He's gonna hear this shit, man. He's gonna kill all of us in our sleep. He's gonna kill us in his sleep, then make a diss track on our dead bodies. <laughs> and then he's gonna go to jail for confessing a murder in, in music. Oh, he's about to get some fucking goons in his moon in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ! Fucking Christ! Monics out here killing niggas on a podcast. It's funny, too, because the only reason why I made my video on it, because I saw your video, and I'm like, you're being too nice? Uh, like, yeah. like oh, the poison Oh, yeah, so I'm like, I'm gonna make a video on this, and it's gonna be great. I, I also made that video, too, because... He he made he left a comment under my comment under your video. And he was already <laughs> like, oh, legit, dude, he, he snapped. He's like, bro, who the fuck is this? I was like, dude, I'm a fucking YouTuber. Does it matter? Man, he's lucky I didn't make a video grilling into him. Hey, that could be that, that could be fucking Joe Schmo from California. Like, like, dude, Monica Biss would have milked him for fucking views, bro. I don't think he realizes how lucky he is. After you made your video, he messaged me saying, Bro, why the fuck did you send him that video? Who get, who the fuck gave you permission? Dude, it's on the fucking internet. Who needs permission? Yeah. Like, it, it was ridiculous. Just the way he reacted to that, which is another reason I feel he needs to be fucking humbled. I don't know, if he doesn't learn from you guys, I'm more than fucking willing to milk the fuck out of the moon, Coon. <laughs> <laughs> get so many fucking memes out of that. <laughs> You know how oh, many no, memes no, you're going to get in the comments after this? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if he disses me, I'm responding with a fucking 10-minute video of non-stop moon goon jokes. 
<laughs> it's probably do because for me, I don't even, I don't even think I have to make a diss track. I just have to make a reaction video, and there you go, I win. <laughs> just say Moon Goon. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> Fucking Christ, I can imagine 10 minutes of Moon Goon jokes just making my ears bleed. I can imagine just a fucking lo-fi beat just going off in the background while you're sitting there talking about Moon Goon jokes. <laughs> I'll be sitting there 7 minutes in, sitting there cleaning blood off my fucking shoulders. Moon Goon? More like Moon Buffoon. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs>